Pete Buttigieg, Buttigieg, Booty, whatever. Oh, you don't want to play ball, Biden? We blow up the trains and make them go boom, boom. End of rant. <laughs> I'm Bridget Pettacy, and this is your dumpster fire for the weeks of February 5th to February 23rd. And the unicorns dance while the world burns, world burns, world burns. We're back. Woo-hoo. Thank you for putting up with our disappearance. It was a last minute trip to go see my good friend Rogan and have a lovely catch up conversation with him and check out some places in Texas. So we appreciate that you put up with our absence for a week. We're back, though. Join us at Fetacy.com to get the unedited version of this absolute crazy show. <laughs> Crazier than usual lately. You get it on the day before it goes up. And you also get access to our amazing community of people, like-minded individuals who love the dumpster and they love the fire. We work out with the ladies and there's write clubs. So people are doing writing prompts and it's just an overall great place to be. Join us at Fetacy.com if you want to support the show. It's the best way to do so. Make sure that you like, subscribe, comment, touch my bells and buttons. And most importantly, tell somebody about this show. We are shooting without Sammy Flaps and Folds today too because we... It's a work day. It's a work day. So so it's just on me, guys. And if something goes wrong, it's all my fault. (laughs) And my fault, too. All right. Starting it off with women. Women! Women! Nikki Haley announces her bid for the GOP nomination. Don Lemon says she's past her prime. (laughs) Don Lemon actually made the argument it wasn't like he said she was past her political prime which would have been an easy way for him to back out of that horrible comment anyway he said she was past her prime and then proceeded to say because women everybody knows women are in their prime in their 20s and 30s and early 40s go google it well let's be nice let's be nice we don't have to go there i mean you're not wrong right and then a journalist told us to google Try searching for nuclear devices on AskJeeves.com. The state, the absolute state of CNN. I love when Don Lemon goes full Gavin McGinnis. And he's like, your ovaries are dried up. You're f***ing done. I know. And he was trying to defend it like, oh, that's what they're saying over there. It's not what I'm saying, but it was what he was saying. A woman is considered to be in her prime in her 20s and 30s and maybe 40s he tried to act like his suggestion was complaining and he was like i'm with you guys not these other people who are saying this like you just said this don lemon yeah you. yeah and then told us to go google it to, to go look at a woman's prime years women <laughs> Unbelievable. You only could get away with this if you were Don Lemon on CNN. Uh, yeah. Anybody else would be fucking canceled. They'd be fired. It would be like he did have to go to some diversity training, <laughs> sensitivity <laughs> training, which is hilarious for a week. Came back and made another like notes on apology. It reads like something he drafted in his notes. Yeah. And the gall of and saying didn't this. even apologized to Nikki Haley, who he was talking about in his apology, refused to apologize to her. Wow. The gall of saying this, too, when we have an 80 year old president. This whole talk about age makes me uncomfortable. I think that I think it's the wrong road to go down. She says people, you know, politicians or something are not in their prime. Nikki Haley is in her prime. Sorry. When a woman is considered to be in her prime in her 20s and 30s and maybe 40s. What do you call acor- Wait. I, that's not according to me. Prime for what? Uh, it depends. I mean, it's just like prime. If you look it up, it'll. If you look, if you Google when is a woman in her prime, it'll say twenties, thirties, and forties. I don't necessarily. Forties. Oh, I got another. I'm not saying decade. I agree with that. So I think she has to be careful about saying that. Well, you know, politicians aren't in their I think prime. You need to qualify. Are you talking about prime for like child bearing, or are you talking don't shoot about the prime for being president? What? This fi- Don Lemon is fifty-six. Uh, the gall of him saying that about to his thirty-year-old and forty-year-old coworker. With Women who are sitting with him. I know. Yeah, he's insulting a wide swath of people on his own side. Hillary Clinton and Kamala Harris. Like, what does it say about them that they're running for office and that they're past their prime? That's what you're throwing your ovaries in the toilet for? And we literally have olds running the country. <laughs> olds. Literal 80-year-olds. 
If you need more proof that I'm not a new show, it's because I'm past my prime. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, According to Don Lemon, I'm too old to be doing anything. I should just be retiring and baking bread in my freaking kitchen. Only a gay black dude could get away with saying something that fucking sexist. And not get canceled. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Like just straight up canceled. Don Lemon's just mad. He lost his prime time seat at the table. You're a victim. His apology was a real lemon. What is happening? Sam Brinton was called out for stealing another woman's luggage in 2018. This was amazing. So a woman came out and she said her luggage had gone AWOL in 2018 at DCA. And she heard about this guy who stole luggage. And so she went to go look because she's a clothing designer to see if perhaps he would be stupid enough to be photographed in any of her clothing, which he was. Multiple times. Multiple times. I mean... She's an African immigrant and she's a clothing designer, small business owner, just makes these beautiful custom made beautiful outfits that are from her culture. And this motherfucker stole them the balls of they them to fucking wear these on camera. (laughs) I know. There's a mental illness problem in our country. Yeah. You must think you're completely untouchable to be able to do that. You're like, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an MB. No one's coming after me. I'll cancel them. Even though I'm a thief. First of all, Sam Britton looks like a, a garbage pail kid. <laughs> it really does. He has like resting I've been eating Cheetos face or something. <laughs> If he was a garbage pail kid, we'd call him Sticky Fingers Sam. (laughs) Nothing is more representative of what wokeism actually is than a white liberal male stealing from a black African female immigrant. I am the strongest woman this state has ever seen. He's stealing her cultural clothing and wearing it as his costume. Yeah. Her culture is not your costume, sir. I mean, ma'am, or them, whatever you are. I don't care. I'm sick of this shit. You know who you are? You're a thief. I just don't care. I, uh, I'm i so tired of this shit. You're a thief. Yeah. Give this woman her clothes back. <laughs> <laughs> the fucking balls. Uh, yeah. To wear that shit. Sticky fingers, Sam, we're coming after you. It's a dumpster pail kid. We're going to start a new line of dumpster pail kids. And our first is sticky fingers, Sam. <laughs> They <laughs> could collect them all coming soon. We're all gonna die. Train wreck spills toxic chemicals in Palestine, Ohio, in an event being called Chernobyl 2.0. I mean, I think the only reason people didn't think this was as big of a deal is because they thought it was like actually Palestine. They read the headline and it was like, oh, a train crashes in East Palestine, and they're like, mm, not in America, don't care. Just keep on scrolling. The politicians and the pundits and everybody, we were covering this. When when did I go on Rogan? Like over a week ago? Yeah. Over over a week week ago. ago. It came out last Wednesday. And we were talking about this, and I'd been following it already for 10 days. Just now, Pete Buttigieg, the head of the transportation secretary or whatever he is, failing up to success, he's there today. Yeah. And... I think Trump went yesterday with some big flashy show and finally they're getting, they're like, you know, they're caring about the people. I was like, did you guys just wait? Oh, CNN did a town hall with the people there last night. I'm like, are you guys just waiting for the poison to clear out before he showed up? Because this shit's been going on for weeks. Like two weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, like three weeks. Well, and you know that the only reason the left started paying attention was because Trump went. You know, so then Pete Buttigieg was like, oh, f- I've got to go now. I just want what. And then he barely sent like water and cleanup stuff. And I just <laughs> was imagining him in Puerto Rico with those like paper towels. <laughs> Here, clean up your poison with these. Oh. Just throwing them all paper towels. Pete Buttigieg, Buttigieg Buttig- booty, whatever. He was like, some people go for the optics and other people go to get stuff done. And you, for one, sir, do neither. (laughs) 
everybody who's blaming everyone else, which of course they are in this train disaster, it is slightly responsible. So it seems like every administration is responsible for this railroad disaster. And there have been multiple derailments since then. But uh, allegedly, Trump deregulated some of the things that are partially responsible for all of these trains derailing. And then also Biden busted the union. They were trying to fight for like four days and it was right before the holidays and they were about to go on strike and they busted the strike. Mm -hmm. And now I'm like, you know. The this union, is, it's the union. Yeah. I'm not going to start any conspiracy theories, but they're like, you don't want to mess up with us. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to play ball. We blow up the trains. <laughs> this is my bad Italian mafia <laughs> accent. Boba de papa. Boba baby, boba papa, baby, baba. Oh, you don't want to play ball, Biden. We blow up the trains <laughs> and make them go boom, boom. Don't be racist. I am a building. What the hell is that? <laughs> uh, I don't, I'm an Italian mafioso. This is my impression of someone in the mob. Uh, oh, we go boom boom. <laughs> uh, you wanna you wanna play a ball? We blow up the trains. We go. Poof. We spill the toxic waste in your neighborhood. Hey, Amtrak Joe. We don't like the way you're trying to bust us. Yeah, that was a, that was veering a little bit into a Caribbean accent. <laughs> <laughs> Tell Maggie in the comments what accents you would like to hear from me. Oh, trying to do her <laughs> Irish is amazing. We don't even know how bad this disaster is going to be kind of environmentally because apparently, you know, one of the t chemicals like bonds with water. So now it's like since it's burned off, it's in the atmosphere. We and don't know anything because they won't tell us anything. And by the way, they, where are all the freaking bleeding heart libs who care about the environment? Oh, no, they only care about doomsday climate change when they can use it to manufacture a fake energy crisis so they can raise our rates and squeeze all of us for every last penny that we're worth. <laughs> Someone got her electricity bill recently. <laughs> and my gas bill. Yeah. Are you fucking kidding me? Uh, this is fake. This is a fake scarcity. It's a real, like, yes, there's climate stuff we need to worry about, but the scarcity is false. I don't know enough about it. I don't either. <laughs> I'm just making this like, up. I'm just I making sure everyone knows it's fake. <laughs> fake news. All right, well, then we have Troll in Exile. Oh, Jesus, this story, too. The head juror for the Georgia grand jury that could recommend charges against President Trump did a bizarre media tour. She's another dumpster pail kid. Yeah. <laughs> Why does she look crazy? <laughs> she lo has crazy eyes. Yeah. Every woman and man knows, and them knows, crazy eyes. This chick has crazy eyes. She She's, does. She Even her little looks. And people were like, I really respect that she has no media training. And I kind of felt like that must be what it's like to watch me when I go on with some of these shows. Oh, yeah, for sure. Because I have no media training. I know you guys will find this hard to believe. <laughs> That's like the eye roll on the Ben Shapiro <laughs> show. <laughs> I forgot I was on camera. Okay. <laughs> She's got the energy of someone who went to a Christian college and just got finger blasted for the first time. <laughs> she totally does. Yeah, she does. But apparently she's like into Wicca and she's a witch. She's, she looks like the penguin. Holy God, what are you this showing me? Is, hey, come on. But didn't we also say that Sam Bankman Freed looks like the penguin? Yeah, we did. Why does, does everyone look like the She's a, we were reading about her. Of course, she's a theater chick. Of course. Yeah, she went. But not like a theater chick on the front of the house, like a back of the she house. Does, she went into theater tech and design, like set design yeah, or like something like that. Yeah, like she does lighting and set design because with a face like that. Uh, she's not going to make it as an actor. <laughs> I'm so mean. That was a mean thing to say. There's a conspiracy that I would like to start that she's a media plant who is sent to basically throw the grandeur 
you know, they they don't want Trump to be indicted. So she's a media plant who's out there trying to throw it so that they can feed off the carcass of that bloated 80 year old whale for another four years. No. And it's so weird, too, because she's the head juror. How did she get nominated as the head juror? Right. What were the other options? You have to be a nominated or appointed. I'm like, who's either nominate, like electing or appointing this girl as the head juror? She looks like she plays Hogwarts Legacy in silence. <laughs> like she's embarrassed to play it, but she's still going to play it. <laughs> Wingardium Leviosa. Stop it, Rod. Stop. <laughs> Even if she's canceling herself in her heart. I didn't know the penguin was transitioning to a 15 year old girl. <laughs> Her little, like, look. I, I know. She was, like, trying to look coy. It was, like, a coy look. Like, I don't know. There's six pages that are deleted in between. Is And this is, how is this legal? I how don't is this allowed? know. Even Maggie Averman was being interviewed and everyone. You can see these very professional, media-trained journalists dealing with her, like, what is happening? They're just, you can see that they're like, hmm, okay, I'm supposed to smile and nod and take this person seriously. <laughs> For some reason, because I hate my life and I'm going to go and drink myself to sleep because here I am with this weird Wiccan <laughs> talking about Trump in like the strangest simulation ever. The Matrix has attacked me. I just see the like the women's like media trained faces that don't move. Just hmm. kick in. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. They're like off somewhere. She's a dumpster fire kid. What would her. Dun we had a couple options for her dumpster pale kid name. We had embarrassing Emily, excruciating Emily or embolism Emily. Because she looks like she's having an embolism. <laughs> she, something ain't right in there. Tell us in the comments what Emily's dumpster pail name is. I feel like we haven't really nailed that one down. No, we haven't. Let's take a minute to check the weather with Bella Osario. And let me tell you, you're not going to want to miss this weather report. If you're listening just via the podcast, go check this one out on, on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> sus previsiones. Pero ¿qué les parece si con este dato me acompañan a conocer las temperaturas que estarán oscilando durante muy temprano en el norte del país? Like, subscribe, comment, touch my bells and buttons, leave a comment and tell all your friends, tell your friends all about the dumpster fire. Make sure you check out our merch at BridgetFetacy.com. We have dumpster fire merch, so rock your merch so when you're out in the real world, people can be like, I love that show. There, there are dozens of us. Dozens of us! Dozens! Today's episode has been brought to you by SheathUnderwear.com. We love Sheath here. They have been with us for years now. They have the dual pouch system, and it is the most magical system. It keeps the family jewels separate. It keeps everything nice and compartmentalized. And then there's a little hole for the genitalia to go through. You don't have to get everything readjusted when you're grocery shopping or looking for some wood down at the lumber store. You don't have to be thinking about your balls because Sheath has got you covered. They're the only underwear my husband will even wear anymore. Everything else is gone. They have a whole line for women, which I personally live in. And it's my travel underwear. They have the Modal fabric, which keeps everything like nice and balanced, your pH. So for 2023, step up your underwear game. Graduate from holes and loose fabrics, cheap cotton or overpriced designer brands. Get the greatest underwear that's ever graced the balls of man. SheathUnderwear.com. The underwear of legends like my husband. Go to sheathunderwear.com and use the code dumpster to get 20% off your entire order. That is sheathunderwear.com. Use the code dumpster for 20% off your entire order. The link is in the description below. Never woke enough. Hundreds of changes have been made to the original text of Roald Dahl's books after sensitivity readers were hired to scrutinize the text with words such as fat removed. Okay, first of all, this makes me want to unalive myself. Click, boom, boom, bye-bye. I would rather you just burn my book than change it. Just burn it. Unless I'm doing that change and making that edit, just take it and throw it in the pile with the Harry Potter books and whatever else you're burning. But also, I didn't realize what an enormous piece of shit Roald Dahl was until 
this came out and then I started reading the comments and everyone was talking about what a piece of garbage he was. But I was also on Michael Malice's podcast this past week and he talks about Roald Dahl in his new book, The White Pill, and what an enormous piece of shit he is because apparently he like sexually assaulted his wife after she had a stroke. Oh. Oh. And she talks about it. And she gave him a dumpster pale kid name. She actually called him Rolled the Rotten, which is a, li- is a dumpster pale kid name. Totally. So it's it's upsetting to me to find out that he, I just didn't know. I didn't know he was such an anti-Semite and all of these things. Yeah, they're going to rewrite like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory is um, like Charlie and the Sugar Free. <laughs> Candy zone. Candy zone. <laughs> Because factories are <laughs> anti-environmental. Factories offensive. Uh, Candy zone. Yeah, they're taking out like references to female characters. <laughs> they also turned all of Fantastic Mr. Fox's sons into... They trans his sons. They turned all them three all into of girls. Them. All three of them. Why not just make one of them a girl? Why? Uh, this is nonsense. Yeah. All of this stuff is nonsense. And as Kat Rosenfield said on Twitter, this should be illegal. Should be. Yeah. Everybody has to buy physical copies of media. This is what everyone's been saying for years. Buy physical copies. Because think of how they'll be able to just edit this if you have the ebook. Yeah. Sensitivity reading is nonsense. Sensitivity readers make me want to bing bong, bing bong. You should X's just have to deal eye. with how people <laughs> I'm so, spoke I'm so or talked. i to sensitivity readers. There's you can you can learn from it, but you can't. You shouldn't just erase it. I'm sensitive to sensitivity readers. <laughs> I really am, though. For some reason, just that term sounds so dystopian to me. You what a fucking soft little society we live in that you have to have sensitivity readers who determine what you can and can't handle. Oh, thank you, big brother. Thank you for protecting me from the word fat. This is why we use it here on Dumpster Fire. We're not going to protect you from the harsh reality of the fats and the olds and the pores and the morons. Moron. Moron. You're listening. Do know you're listening to a moron. Yeah, we don't claim to be right about anything. We don't claim to know anything here on Dumpster Fire. I'm just winging it here in a garage. My hands are freezing. (laughs) Moving on. Moving on. The making of a eunuch and eunuch maker. So I just wanted to talk about these idiots again. (laughs) Harry and Meghan are pissed off about South Park's portrayal of them. The name of the new South Park episode, which you should absolutely go watch, is the Worldwide Privacy Tour. And it's freaking brilliant and absolutely nails everything that I feel about our culture as usual. And this whole Meghan and Harry thing where they're like, we want our privacy. We want our privacy. And he's playing the drums. It's the Worldwide Privacy Tour. It's it is so good. It's so good. And they also have to go to brand management, the kids, and every single brand is like, You're witty, sharp, talented, victim. Like yeah. every every <laughs> single person's brand ends in victim. It's we hear we hear a dumpster fire stan the South Park. Always have, always will. Yes. And if you haven't watched our South Park that Maggie and I wrote, we highly recommend it. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, Mrs. Garrison, Mrs. Garrison, pick me, pick me. Still holds up. Still holds up. All right. Moving on to dumpster diving. What's next in the dumpster? (laughs) My hands are so cold. (laughs) A seven foot sword is unearthed in Japan. Another sword has been unearthed. Someone's assembling a team in case you haven't been keeping track, which we have been for you. There is a team being assembled out there. They keep unearthing these swords just left and right. These ancient weapons. Yeah. Teenage girl. And it's always like teenage girls. I don't think this was in this case. But yeah, these ancient weapons are being found. And then there was and with all the weird things, they we didn't really cover how they've been just shooting random things out of the sky. We really brushed right over that. Yeah. And then there was that thing that washed up on the shore of Japan. The round it looked like a buoy. Whatever. There was too much to cover. We just we have to be very selective with what goes in the dumpster maybe it was one of the globes that fell into the ocean maybe then we have breaking bridget (laughs) the dominion lawsuit against fox resulted in text messages being disclosed surrounding the election fraud claims 
Basically, none of the Fox hosts thought that the election was stolen and they thought the claims were, quote, mind-blowingly nuts. And this is where I get frustrated because if you think that Fox isn't part of the mainstream media, I would like to sell you a bridge, sir. (laughs) I don't understand. When I say mainstream media, I always lump Fox in with CNN and MSNBC. I know not everybody does this, but Fox is a massive network. It is very mainstream. And just like all of these networks, the people, pundits in particular, who are on them are Don Lemon, Tucker Carlson. They're narcissistic idiots who will say anything because all they really crave and want is that parasocial relationship with their audience and ratings to be high. There was a clip of CNN talking about the Dominion lawsuit and they're like, oh my God, Look at the propaganda over there at Fox. You're all propagandists. <laughs> at this point, you're all just faking being news organizations. None of you are serious. None of you are anything but a propaganda wing for a party in this country. Whether you are a propaganda wing for the right or the left, just depends on what network you're watching and what you want to believe about America. But this this lawsuit is interesting and good for Dominion for actually taking this on. Because what they're forcing Fox to do is admit that these people consider themselves journalists. Because unlike us in a garage with no fact checkers and, and anything, making fun of ourselves and the news, these people actually do know that people take them seriously and turn to them for news. And they consider themselves journalists and will call themselves journalists until suddenly they're in trouble and then they'll say, oh, everyone knows that you don't you shouldn't take Tucker seriously or that Sean Hannity is a bloviated windbag that nobody believes. That's not true. And Dominion is actually pushing them to admit this. And they have a pretty strong case. I don't know how strong New York Times went through this when they got sued too. CNN got sued by a freaking Covington kid. Yeah. Like all of these networks are full of sh- They're all garbage. They're sometimes presenting news, but they're never presenting it without their own spin. They're never just giving you facts. It's always a mostly peaceful protest or uh, the election was stolen. Wink, wink. Yeah. It's all about money and ratings. Money and ratings. There was that Tucker Carlson who is a ginormous piece of crap. Based on, I just love when everyone's text messages come out. I never text anything without thinking, this is going to end up in some lawsuit someday. Right, (laughs) right. All of this will be public. Hey, your first lesson you should take from this is whatever you're texting might end up in a lawsuit. Or emailing. Or emailing, yes. And these were, these guys, imagine that group chat with Tucker Carlson, Sean Hannity, and Laura Ingram. Oh, And they're all like, this is unbelievable. One of the the Fox people was tweeting a fact check, and they were getting mad and trying to tell her to get fired, saying she should be fired, and to get her for taking down the fact check. Yeah. I mean, so much is coming out in this, and it's, I don't know why anyone believes any of it. Yeah. Why would you believe these people? All they care about are ratings and their egos and their bank accounts and their money. And you're and you are like, oh, yeah, I trust Sean Hannity. Sean Hannity. (laughs) Come on, Susan. (laughs) (laughs) They're going to do whatever it takes to keep your attention. Yeah. All they care about are your eyeballs. They don't give a shit. If you're going to go storm the Capitol and end up on an FBI watch list and More get arrested for them to report on, they don't Great. care. They don't care. They don't give a shit about your welfare. They don't care if you're going to go burn down a police precinct and end up in jail. No, they'll incite all of that shit, take like plausible deniability and then act like, oh, it's just these dumb dumbs who listen to us. How, imagine that. Mm. Imagine, imagine how insane of a position that is to take. Uh, we know we're dumb dumbs and that our audience is dumb dumbs. And our audience is smarter than we are. Right. We know this. And we do our best to just kind of make jokes about it. That's us putting our spin on it. But we do not ask you to take us seriously for one second. <laughs> and I'm not asking you to storm anything ever. <laughs> a precinct or the Capitol. And I'm not asking you. I believe our elections work. Want to know why? Because if I don't believe that, if I don't believe that we have fair elections, what is the point of voting? So already 
democracy is already done if you don't believe that they are not fair elections. Been given the right to choose between a douche and a two. And for these pieces of shit to plant that seed, knowing that they don't even believe that, in the minds of millions of people who are just so desperate for their side to win and and so invested in this political persona that they've all developed over the past seven years because of a strong contamination that's in our water. I don't understand. (laughs) They are the worst kinds of people because you are going to take actions based on that, whether it's not voting, whether it's going out and doing something stupid, like yelling in the face of a a voting worker. Yeah. You're going to be, your behavior will be determined by something they know they're selling you is a lie. And I'm not saying this is only Fox and we're just covering this example of it. And by the way, we've given the left tons of for this kind of stuff Mm -hmm. they 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 didn't believe the elections in georgia stacey abrams never fully conceded until recently but she was always very sketchy about it in the mainstream media in general there's an idea festering that our elections are not fair and actually considering all of the stuff they seem to be pretty oh like pretty legitimate pretty legitimate yeah and people can disagree with me or not. You can think there not, weren't even elections. You can think that, sure, mail-in ballots, sketchy. I'll give you that. There's room for shenanigans there. Not sure how I feel about it. Ballot harvesting, don't know how that's legal. Shouldn't be. But for the most part, I think the people are exerting their will, whether you want to believe that or not. Yeah. It just makes me crazy because you know what makes me crazy is that these people are invested in making you crazy. Which I think is the most f***ed up thing you can do to someone. It's like when a boyfriend or girlfriend gaslights you. Don't gaslight Gaslighting doesn't exist. You made it up because you're f***ing crazy. They're trying to make you crazy, knowing that they're they're above this belief. Yeah, they're making you doubt reality. Yeah, they're making you doubt reality. And this is every institution right now everywhere. So I don't blame you for feeling nuts. But you're actually not nuts if you feel like... All of this is insane. You're you're pretty. There's more of you than you think. Yep. You are not alone. And that's and that's it. That's my rant. End of rant. <laughs> <laughs> Fantasy news. Fantasy news. We didn't forget. Internet is glorious. We're rearranging things and pushing it to the very end of the episode. Make sure you join us at Fetacy.com. It's the best way to su- support this show. You can also get workouts, write club, writing prompts, and you get the unedited version of this show whenever it drops the day before we put it up for free and edited. And you also get an ad-free edited version as well. I didn't mention that at the top. And if you want to keep track of all the various things, we are putting out so much content. Maggie and I are spinning like tops, and it's super fun. And I have writing prompts going out every night, and we've got letters from the politically homeless and I know it's a lot to keep track of. And now I have three, two podcasts in this show. If you want to keep track of all of it and want it in a nice, very succinct little newsletter at the end of the week, please sign up for our newsletter at bridgeofphetacy.substack.com. We will not sell your information and it's free. It goes out every Friday and every performance. If I appeared somewhere else, if I wrote somewhere else, anything that I've done is all in one place and easy for you to find from that week. Thank you to everyone who made this show possible. Thank you, Maggie, for everything. Thank you, Bridget. And thank you to our audience supporters, subscribers. Thank you, Dave Yates, Better Fetacy, Ben Howe. Can't do this without you. Thank you to my husband. Thank you to Luna. Thank you to Sammy Flaps and Folds and to our sponsor, Sheath Underwear. And thank you, Zempro Audio, for all of our audio equipment. Go to ZemproAudio.com. And all of the stuff is in the link in the description below. Follow our people. Follow me. Internet is glorious. Nobody has time for that gentle parenting nonsense. Kids need to be punished for their bad behavior. So I sent him to his room because he hit a sister, and now I'm reading on the internet that he is going to have abandonment issues, problems with developing friendships, loneliness, depression, and issues with navigating relationships as an adult. Did I ruin him? Think a nigga think that he be doing because it doesn't matter because I'm gonna yeah. da 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 gonna murder everything and anything about a boom about a bang I gotta You gotta pack much back So yeah. fellas Yeah fellas Yeah Your girlfriend got the butt Shake it Shake it Shake that healthy butt Baby got back This has been your dumpster fire for the weeks of February 5th to February 23rd. I'm Bridget Fetacy. Now make me real!
I'm rich instead. But make me literally. 